emojis Oh my, there I go again You don't score enough, I mean no offense Yo, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Moose and welcome back to the channel. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we will be continuing on here with our Houston Comets franchise. If you guys haven't seen the first episode of the series, definitely feel free to go and check that out. We got through the expansion draft, we did the NHL draft, and we went through the entire offseason. So of course, we are picking up where we last left off in the previous episode. We are here at the start of the regular season. And as you guys can see, we've got our home opener, the very first game in the history of the Houston Comets against the Winnipeg Jets. So in today's episode, guys, we are going to get through the entire first season in the history of the Houston Comets. We are going to go into our first game against the Winnipeg Jets, and we are going to watch our team play their first game ever. And then after that, we're going to sim through our first season. We're going to get to the trade deadline, and we'll see how our team's doing at that point. If we're in a playoff position, we'll definitely act as buyers. We'll try to bring on some better talent here to help this team out. But realistically, this team probably won't be that good in this first season. Of course, your options are pretty limited during the expansion draft. I drafted a lot of good young players with high potential, but not necessarily the best overalls. So I don't personally expect this team to be battling for a playoff position. I think we're going to get to the trade deadline and we'll probably be sellers. So like I mentioned, we are going to start today's episode by watching our Houston Comets in their very first game ever as they take on the Winnipeg Jets. But really quickly before we do that, I just want to go over a couple of things with you guys. Okay, so first thing I want to go over with you guys is the captains and jersey numbers. So for year one here, we're going to have Sam Gerrard as the assistant captain. Sean Jersey is going to be the other assistant captain and Tyler Bertuzzi who is our best player from an overall standpoint he's going to be our third and final assistant captain and I did my best to give every single player their real life jersey number taking a look at our contracts now we have four pending unrestricted free agents after this season so you got Tyler Bertuzzi and as you guys can see he has no under extension so he's currently not interested in re-signing here in Houston so we could potentially look to move him at the trade deadline get some draft capital back so I think Tyler Bertuzzi could definitely be a piece that we see moving on here our other unrestricted free agents at the end of this season are Pierre Engvall, Alex Kerfoot, and Sonny Milano. These guys could definitely be pieces that we look to flip at the trade deadline if we find ourselves out of a playoff spot. As far as upcoming restricted free agents, we've got a ton. We've got Ethan Bear, Jesse Pugliarvi, Philip Heedle, Kale Addison, Cal Foote, Michael McLeod, and Clem Costin, as well as a bunch of guys here in the AHL. Taking a look at this year's draft class, of course, it is absolutely stacked. Of course, we've got all the real life prospects in this draft class. So you've got Connor Bedard, at the top of the draft. You've also got Matvey Mitchkov out of Russia, Adam Fantilli, who is widely considered to be the favorite to go second overall after Connor Bedard in real life. You've got the centerman Dalibor Dvorsky and Leo Carlson, who of course is a top three NHL draft prospect in real life. He's down here at number nine here in the central rankings in NHL, but we've got him here in this draft class, as well as a bunch of other real life prospects like Edward Sale, Cam Allen, and Braden Yeager. So I'm not gonna lie, guys, I low-key want this team to absolutely tank this season. It would be amazing for us if we could get that first overall pick and we could draft Connor Bedard to Houston. Yes. Yes. And I'll quickly go over our lineup here before we head into our very first game. So on the first line, you got Tyler Bertuzzi, Philip Heedle, and Jesse Pugliarvi. On the second line, you have Nino Niederreiter with Pierre Engvall and Frank Vitrano. Sonny Milano, Alex Kerfoot, and Kasperi Kapanen make up our third line. And our fourth line consists of Clem Costin, Michael McLeod, and Matthew Joseph. On defense, we've got Sam Gerrard and Ethan Bear as our top defense pair. Nicholas Hag and Sean Jersey are the second pair, with Kalen Addison and Hayden Fleury making up the third and final defense pair. In net, we're going to have Dan Vladar as our starter, simply just because he has a higher overall, and Uko Pekalukunin will be backing him up in the first game. All right, so I I just wanted to go over all that with you guys so now we are gonna head into the first game ever in the history of the houston comets it's a home game against the winnipeg jets and if you guys missed it or you didn't watch the first episode of the series i'll quickly just give you a quick little view of the jerseys again so we've got the home blues here there are the away jerseys and we of course have the red alternates and we're gonna go ahead and wear the home blues for our very first game all right so we're just gonna sit back and watch the computers play so all right everybody sit back relax and enjoy Opening night of the regular season. I cannot wait for this one. Welcome back to EA Sports, everybody. James Sabolski and Ray Ferraro set for the play-by-play. -play. We are about officially set to drop the puck on this season. The Comets take possession here on the opening draw, and we are underway. And that goes off the glove, and it stays out. On oh, a good textbook hit there. Winnipeg's got control of it now from their own end. Ehlers plays the puck. Denies him! The 
Comets will play it from the defensive zone. Winnipeg's gained possession along the boards. Ladar's going to smother it to get a whistle. Now he takes it over the line. Handles the puck at the point. And he takes a shot. Great save by Riddick. No rebound there. You want the puck? Look at it in the corner. The goalie's turned it aside. Tremendous save by Riddick. Costin's got lots of tricks up his sleeve, but he tries there to get around the defender. Just can't quite complete the move. Makes a save. Puck picked up by Ehlers. Lagar's going to cover it up and get a whistle. And he takes the pass. Winnipeg's got the puck along the wall. Here's a short pass to Janssen Fjolby. Lagar's going to cover up the puck here for a whistle. And he gives it over to Dursey. Takes the feed at center from the right wing. Bertuzzi's got it against the board. be a great answer to a trivia question in the future. Who scored first for this franchise? And it's really cool that your name will always be attached to it. Houston's taking the lead here in the late goings of this first period. The Comets gain control of the puck. And with the buzzer, that puts the ball on the first 20 minutes of play. We've got lots more still to come. Second period action next right here. Period number two is about to get underway. Second frame is underway as the puck is dropped. Taken along the wall by Kion. Delayed penalty looming. And it's a quick pass to Ehlers. The Jets move it in. There's the whistle, and here's the call. Trying to come up with a huge defensive play to get this puck out of his own end. And he was right there to make the stop on that play. They are really dialed in here tonight. Along the side, here they come to the neutral zone. Grabbed along the board by Addison. Quick pass across to Morrissey. Receives the pass. And the goaltender comes up with a piece of it to keep it out of the net. Yeah, it's in a dangerous spot. He makes a good save here. Bertuzzi's ready to go. Takes a wrist shot. The Jets' man advantage fails to deliver, and they remain a goal behind. Sends a pass over. Quick feed to Niederreiter. They score! What an effort! And look at this! Everybody wants to get off to a great start, James. He gets the opportunity. He's got one on the board early. That makes you think there's good things down the road. Gains the zone through the middle. Puts it on net, and the save. Moves it to Bertuzzi. Let's go. Scores, and someone's having a happy Thanksgiving. Houston's on cruise control now. Is that fair to say? The Jets have it now. Here's a short pass to Shifley. Moves it to the middle. And he shuts down a great scoring chance there. Winnipeg's got the puck inside the defensive zone. Sends it out in front. And that's stopped. He tries to make a diagonal pass to Dillon. Under all sorts of pressure, trying to protect the puck. Play blown dead. Let's get the call. Quick feed to Heedle. Here we go, it's a two-on-one! Oh, denies them with the paddle save! And momentum on their side as they win the draw here inside the offensive zone. And he gets in front of that! Riddick fought that puck all night long. He makes a good save there, James, but it's been a long night for him, and the guys in front of him haven't been much better. Couldn't make the connection on the play. Makes the save! Heedle's got it, and they'll go on the attack here in the offensive zone. Oh, he had the right idea, but couldn't make that play with the pass. Here's a short pass to Pugliarvi. Pass broken up. Here's the breakaway. Oh, what a stop between the pipes. He is dialed in. Point blank range. And another stop. They don't want to 
give up anything because they've got such a large lead. They want to run this in on cruise control. There's the buzzer bringing period number two to a close. Hey, listen, we've got lots more in store here on this broadcast, so don't even think about going anywhere. We're back with more in a moment. The final frame looms here as the officials set to drop the puck on period number three. The wall by Dubois. Here's an odd man rush. It's a two on one. And that's blocked from someone in front. Winnipeg's got the puck here in the open ice. Now a quick pass to Nunavara. Tries to the crease. And he gets just enough of it to keep it out for the back of the net. Tries to get the puck to Tony Dotto. Takes it and looks ahead. Shot. Good stop by Vladar. Houston's got the puck along the wall. Shot. Blocker saved by the goalkeeper. And now he tries to get it across to Nemestikov. Takes the puck behind the net. Big time stop. Jersey's got it in the defensive end. And it's kicked away. Quick feed to Wheeler. Can't make it work. Here's a shot. Tremendous athletic stop with the glove by Riddick. They say it takes a village. In this case, it's a team. Seconds to spare. And they're about to pick up their first ever team shot. And that's all she wrote on this one as we are in the books. What a way to jump out of the starting blocks here. They get the win, they play well. Man, the guys were excited. That did not look and feel like a regular win. Good for them. What a fantastic performance from the boys there in their 3-0 shutout victory over the Winnipeg Jets. Jesse Pugliarvi gets the first goal in the history of the Houston Comets. And Dan Vladar gets a shutout in the very first game for Houston. Man, I definitely didn't expect that type of performance against a team like the Winnipeg Jets. But what a great game that was for the boys. I'm still not necessarily convinced that this team is going to be any good this year as far as making the playoffs. But man, what a hell of a debut game for the Houston Comets. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. So with our very first game out of the way now, we won 3-0 against Winnipeg. So now I'm going to start to sim through the regular season. So let's go ahead and sim through about the first month and see where we're at. So after simming about a month there, guys, not surprisingly, we struggled heavily. As you guys can see there, our record is 3-9-2. and two. Nino Niederreiter is currently our leading scorer with 9 points, but only one of those points is a goal as he has 8 assists. And Jesse Pugliarvi's had a pretty decent start here with Houston. Of course, he scored the very first goal in the history of our franchise, and he's continued to score at a pretty decent pace as he's put up 3 goals and 5 assists for 8 points in 14 games. And Dan Vladar has really struggled since that first game where he got that shutout, as he currently has a 2-7 and two record in 11 games played. Okay, so let's go ahead and sim another month. Okay, so here we are now in about mid-December. The boys had a much better stretch there. As you can see, our record has improved to 12, 14, and 4. So our winning percentage is still under 500, but we're in a much better spot than we were after the first month. As you can see, we currently sit in 6th place in the Central Division, which is only 2 points behind Nashville, who sits in that 4th spot. Philip Heedle is actually leading our team in scoring now through 30 games, as he has 8 goals and 14 assists for 22 points. And Jesse Pugliarvi has continued to have a great season here in Houston, as he's put up 20 points in his first 30 games with with nine goals and 11 assists. And as you can see, he is our leading goal scorer with those nine goals. And Dan Vladar has been a bit better as well as he now sits with a record of eight, 12, and three. But I'd like to see him get that save percentage up over 900 as it currently sits at 893 to go along with a 328 goals against average. Uko Pekalukin has been pretty good in his seven starts as he has a winning record of four, two, and one, including two shutouts. So two shutouts in just seven games, that's really impressive. And he's got a 909 save percentage with a 2.55 goals against average. All right, guys. So now let's go ahead and sim a good chunk of the rest of our season. I'm going to sim right ahead here to the day before the NHL trade deadline. Are we going to be sellers or buyers at the deadline here? Let's find out.
All right, so here we are the day before the NHL trade deadline. And as you guys can see, our record is 26, 30, and 6. And we have slipped down to second last place in the division as we sit in that 8 spot. So I think it's fair to say we're probably not going to be making the playoffs this year. So I do think we are going to be sellers here at the trade deadline. So we are going to look to move a bunch of our guys here and try to build up some draft capital. And none of our pending UFAs currently want to sign an extension with us. So Tyler Bertuzzi, Pierre Engvall, Alex Kerfoot, and Sonny Milano are all on the chopping block all right let's go ahead and enter the trade deadline and make some moves so taking a look at the top players available here at the trade deadline wow you got drew dowdy available on the la kings of course you have our top trade ship tyler bertuzzi as apparently the teams interested in him are vegas montreal and st louis and the la kings are in absolute fire sale mode as they also have Andre kopitar and philip deneau available Okay, so let's go ahead and use the find trade feature to find a trade for Tyler Bertuzzi. So wow, after using the find trade feature, I was unable to find a trade here for Tyler Bertuzzi. So we're going to have to manually make this trade. So all the teams that are interested in Tyler Bertuzzi, so all the teams that have his name lit up in green, they're all really good teams with winning records. But the Boston Bruins have the closest record to 500 at 30, 25, and 8. Of course, I'm going to try to get their first rounder for Tyler Bertuzzi. I want to stockpile as many first rounders as I can here, because if we don't get the first overall pick, if we don't get lucky during the draft lottery, I want to have the option to trade up for Connor Bedard. Okay, so I don't expect Boston to accept this offer right away. This is kind of just like a starting point here. So let's see what they say to this offer. So not surprisingly, they've rejected the offer. So they're not too thrilled with what we're asking for, but we aren't completely off base. We just have to either increase the value on our end or decrease the value on their end. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to remove this third rounder and see if they'll do this trade for the first rounder and the prospect. All right. So they've rejected that as well. They still want a bit more value. So I'm going to go ahead and add a draft pick. Let's see if they'll do it for this fifth rounder. Let's see if they'll do this trade. Okay. So the value is just a bit low. So I think if I add just a little bit more, we can get this done. So I'm going to add this seventh rounder and hope that'll do it there we go we got the trade accepted so tyler bertuzzi goes to the boston bruins for a first rounder and john beecher the prospect and we also send a fifth and seventh rounders to the boston bruins okay so the next guy we're going to try to move here is pierre engvall so we've got 15 offers here so a third and a sixth from calgary prospect dallas is offering a third and a prospect fourth and a fifth so yeah we're starting to kind of see Ooh, ottawa's offering a second rounder so that's pretty good so yeah we're kind of seeing the value here there's a top four defense prospect. Not bad from Vegas there. But I think we're going to go ahead and we are going to take this second rounder from Ottawa. So let's go ahead and edit this trade. And we've actually got an incoming trade offer. The Seattle Kraken are offering a second rounder for Sonny Milano a fourth and a fifth and Sonny Milano of course is one of our pending UFAs that we're going to move so this is actually pretty interesting I am debating taking this offer let's see if may they'll maybe give us a little bit more just because we're giving them a fourth and a fifth as well they've got two fourth rounder series so let's see if we can get that fourth rounder back by adding it to the trade so Sonny Milano a fourth and a fifth rounder in 2024 for a second and fourth round pick in this year's draft so they've rejected the offer they aren't happy with the fact that we've added that fourth rounder so let's remove that fourth rounder and go ahead and add a fifth and see if they'll take that and they still reject that offer so they really don't want to send another pick here along with the second rounder let's see what happens if i remove this fifth rounder okay so they still reject it oh i just don't know how i feel about giving up a fourth and a fifth we are going to move milano regardless i don't know if we could do better than a second rounder for him so screw it let's make this trade all right Sonny Milano's gone for his second rounder. So now back to this Pierre Engvall trade. So we're now going to acquire another second rounder from the Ottawa Senators here, as well as his backup goalie, Mandalese. Okay, so that trade's been accepted. So now we've picked up two second rounders in this year's draft, as well as a first rounder from Boston for Tyler Bertuzzi, Sonny Milano, and Pierre Engvall. Three players that weren't going to re-sign during the offseason with us anyways. So I think that's a dub. Okay, so we now only have one more player who is a pending UFA that we're going to move on from, and that is Alex Kerfoot. So let's go ahead and see what kind of offers we get for him so we only got two offers for alex kerfoot one from the montreal canadians and one from the seattle kraken so seattle is offering a third rounder as well as philip grubauer but i'm not a fan of that because grubauer has got five years left on his contract at 5.9 million dollars montreal is offering a third rounder and joel armia so let's edit this trade with montreal and get a little bit better of an offer here and oh my goodness ladies and gentlemen i got so caught up in making those moves i actually stopped paying attention to the clock you fool 
So we weren't able to complete the trade for Alex Kerfoot, but that's okay. As you guys saw those offers there, we weren't going to get a lot for him. I was going to try to weasel my way to getting another second rounder from Montreal, but it's not a huge deal. We still made a few really good moves and picked up a first rounder as well as two seconds. So taking a look at the trade deadline summary, there is a bunch of good moves here. So Gavrikov went to the Vegas Golden Knights along with a fifth rounder in exchange for a prospect and two third rounders. The St. Louis Blues moved on from Colton Pareko as they sent him and a sixth rounder to the Arizona Coyotes. The Edmonton Oilers shored up their defense as they acquired veteran defenseman Kevin Shattenkirk from Anaheim in exchange for Philip Broberg and a second rounder. TJ Oshie went from the Washington Capitals to the Pittsburgh Penguins along with Nick Dowd. Ryan Strome and a third rounder made their way to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for a second rounder. Tyler Myers and a fourth rounder. The Nashville Predators picked up Andreas Athanasiu from the Chicago Blackhawks. The Carolina Hurricanes pulled the trigger on one of the bigger trades during the deadline as they acquired center Philip Deneau from the Los Angeles Kings in exchange for two second rounders in 2024. The LA Kings then continued to sell here at the deadline as they sent Victor Arvidsson to the Florida Panthers as well as a third rounder in Sean Walker as they acquired a second rounder in this year's draft as well as a third rounder in next year's draft. And in the only trade so far where we see a first round move hands your Houston Comets of course acquired the 2023 first rounder from Boston along with prospect John Beecher for Tyler Bertuzzi as well as fifth and seventh round draft picks of course in one of our other trades we sent Sonny Milano as well as fourth and fifth round picks to the Seattle Kraken in exchange for a second rounder in 2023 and then of course we also picked up another second rounder in 2023 in exchange for winger Pierre Engvall so those were your notable trades here at the trade deadline. Unfortunately, the LA Kings didn't end up moving either Drew Doughty or Andre Kopitar, which is too bad as that would have been pretty crazy. Okay, so now that the trade deadline has passed, let's go ahead and sim the rest of the regular season. All right, I've just finished up simming the rest of the regular season, and unsurprisingly, we did end up missing the playoffs. Jesse Pugliarvi ended up leading the team in scoring as he had 52 points in 82 games played, including 22 goals and 30 assists. So a pretty solid first year here in Houston for Jesse Pugliarvi. And Philip Hedl had a good season as well as he had 51 points in all 82 games played with 17 goals and 34 assists. Dan Vladar had a better second half to his season as he ended up winning 25 games with 32 losses and 7 overtime losses. And he he ended up getting that save percentage over 900 as he finished with a 905. Our goalie of the future, Uko Pekka Lukanen, ended up playing in 19 games during the season, finishing with a winning record of 11, 5, and 2 with two shutouts, a 921 save percentage, and a 2.34 goals against average. Taking a look at the Central Division, the Colorado Avalanche absolutely dominated, finishing with 105 points with 51 wins. And as you can see, the Houston Comets ended up finishing in sixth place in the division as we had 81 points with a 30. 36, 37, and 9 record. The top teams during the regular season were the Pittsburgh Penguins with 110 points, the Ottawa Senators with 106 points, the New York Rangers also had 106 points with 48 wins, and the Colorado Avalanche and Philadelphia Flyers surprisingly ended up being your top five teams during the regular season. The Boston Bruins ended up finishing in 13th place overall in the entire league. Of course, we have their first rounder this year. We ended up finishing 25th in the entire league, so we're only going to have the ninth best odds during the draft lottery to move up for that first overall pick. So we are definitely going to need some luck on our side. The San Jose Sharks, Los Angeles Kings, Anaheim Ducks, Arizona Coyotes and Nashville Predators were your five bottom teams during the regular season. And as a San Jose Sharks fan, if the Houston Comets can't have Connor Bedard, then at least the San Jose Sharks can have him. The leading scorer during the regular season was actually Alexander Ovechkin as he finished with 101 points with 58 goals and 43 assists. And Nathan McKinnon was the only other 100 point scorer as he finished with 100 points on the dot with 43 goals and 57 assists. Artemi Panarin, Connor McDavid and Miko Rantanen round out the top five scorers during the regular season. And much like real life, Linus Allmark was the number one goaltender as he had the most wins during the regular season as he had a record of 41, 26, and 3. And while our NHL team didn't make the playoffs, our AHL team had a fantastic season as they finished with 50 wins for a record of 50, 28, and 4. Alexi Hepaniemi had an amazing year in the AHL as he finished with 85 points in 82 games, including 26 goals and 50 
59 assists. This is the guy in the house doing all the fucking. Am I right? You know I'm right. And Felipe Richardson did everything we could have asked out of him as he finished with 65 points in 82 games with 21 goals and 44 assists in his first season ever playing pro hockey. And our top defense prospect, David Yurichek, finished the season with 10 goals and 37 assists for 47 points in 82 games played. So our AHL team absolutely killed it and all of our young prospects had great seasons. So in the first round of the AHL playoffs, the Houston Apollos will be taking on the Toronto Marlies. So let's see how they do here. And after four games, the series is tied two to two. So let's go ahead and slow sim these next few games. So here in game number five, after the first period, the Houston Apollos walk away with a 3-2 lead after the first 20 minutes. Christian Fisher, Ryan Merkley, and Pistola get the goals for Houston. So let's go ahead and send the second period now. And the Houston Apollos add one more goal to their total as they take a 4-2 lead into the third period as Thomas Harley scores a goal on the power play. And oh my goodness, after simming the third period, the Toronto Marlies stage a massive comeback against the Houston Apollos as they score five unanswered goals here in the third period to take the 7-4 victory in game five and move up 3-2 in the series. What the fuck happened? What happened? In a must-win game six here as we sim the first period, the Toronto Marlies take a huge 3-0 lead after the first 20 minutes, including two goals from their top prospect, Matthew Nyes. And after the second period, Houston isn't able to chip into the lead as both teams score a goal in the second period as the score is 4-1 here heading into the third. And the Toronto Marlies leave no doubt in the minds of fans walking out of the arena tonight as they dominate the third period and take a dominant 7-2 victory, winning the first round series against the Houston Apollos in six games. Disappointed! All right, so with both our NHL and AHL teams now eliminated from playoff contention, all we have now left to do is sim the rest of the playoffs and get into the offseason. So let's find out who's going to win the Stanley Cup. And the worst thing that could have ever happened for us, of course, because we owned the Boston Bruins first rounder, they unfortunately won the Stanley Cup. So that first rounder now becomes the last first rounder in the entire first round. Well, that sucks. So the Boston Bruins won the Stanley Cup, of course. The Pittsburgh Penguins won the President's Trophy. Alexander Ovechkin takes home the Art Ross Trophy as the leading scorer during the regular season. Nathan McKinnon took home the Hart as the MVP. Rasmus Dahlin won his first career Norris Trophy as the league's top defenseman. Artemi Panarin was awarded the Lady Bing Trophy. And Yerky Verkunin, who of course was the first overall pick by the Chicago Blackhawks, which of course happened in episode one of our Houston Comets franchise, he ends up taking home the Calder Trophy as the league's top rookie. David Pass Pasternak was the MVP of the playoffs, helping the Boston Bruins on their way to winning the Stanley Cup. And Vili Husso was the top goalie this year as he took home the Vesna. And last but not least, Alexander Ovechkin was your top goal scorer this year with 58 goals as he took home the Maurice Richard Trophy. All right, so here we are in the offseason now. So we're going to go ahead and sim to the draft. Of course, we finished in ninth last place during the regular season. So we'll see what happens during the draft lottery. We're going to have the ninth best slash worst odds, depending on how you want to look at that. We, of course, do have two first rounders in this draft but we got completely screwed by Boston winning the Stanley Cup so going into the draft lottery we have the ninth overall pick and the 33rd overall pick so all right let's go ahead and sim to the draft lottery let's hope we get lucky here guys and let's go holy shit boys I can't believe it. We actually jumped up from ninth to one. We have the first overall draft pick in this year's draft. So Houston, we got Connor Bedard coming. Let's go, baby. The Nashville Predators jumped up to the second overall pick at, from number five. And the San Jose Sharks dropped from one to three. LA dropped from two to four. And Anaheim dropped from three to five. I literally could not have scripted this better. Oh man, I was going to have to do like a whole thing explaining to you guys how we were going to try to trade up for first. We we're going to have to do all of this stuff. But now let's just jump into the draft and let's draft Connor Bedard. So we are not going to waste any time here. We're just going to head right in. I am running to the podium with the first overall pick in the 2023 NHL draft. The Houston Comets select from the Regina Pats, Connor Bedard. So there he is. Oh man, let's go. Franchise potential, 82 overall Connor Bedard. He's got shock and awe zone ability as well as the superstar ability snipe puck on a string and tape to tape so down the middle we've got Connor Bedard Felipe Richardson who was the fourth overall pick last year and we've also got Philip Heedle so our top three centers are absolutely stacked now 
So now let's sim ahead and see how the top 10 picks played out. So we of course took Connor Bedard first overall. The Nashville Predators got Matt Vey Mitchkov second overall. He's 80 overall. He's got high elite potential and unlike real life, he's going to make his way to North America right away for the Nashville Predators. The San Jose Sharks with the third overall pick took centerman Adam Fantilli. He's got high elite potential as well and he's a 78 overall. And actually we have three straight picks in a row here by California teams. Of course San Jose took Fantilli. The Los Angeles Kings picking at number four overall took our first AI generated player of the draft as they took Durupos Durapos I don't know how to say that last name but he's got an 80 overall with a medium elite potential. The Anaheim Ducks also took an AI generated player as they got 80 overall Vasilev. He's medium elite potential. He's a right winger. So two 80 overalls go at number four and number five. So this is an absolutely stacked draft class. At number six overall, the Arizona Coyotes took Dalibor Dvorsky. He's a centerman. He's 78 overall with medium elite potential. The Montreal Canadiens picking at number seven overall took a centerman here in Strammel. 77 overall medium elite potential. And if this was real life, this would be the steal of the draft the Chicago Blackhawks at picking at number eight get centerman Leo Carlson of course in real life he is projected to be picked in the top three so a really great pick there by Chicago he's 77 overall with medium elite potential the New York Islanders picking at number nine got 75 overall Zachary Benson but he's got medium elite potential so a really good pick there by the Islanders and the two New York teams pick back to back as the New York Rangers round out our top 10 as they take Cam Allen with the 10th overall pick okay so here we are at the end of the first round of course we have the Boston Bruins first rounder so let's see who we've got available hopefully we can walk away with a pretty decent prospect here so we have ethan gautier here a right winger who our scouts believe has medium elite potential but we could maybe go with the safer pick here in casper haltunen our scouts are completely accurate on him so we know for a fact that he's a good player and that he is top six potential so i think i'm gonna play a little bit safer and i'm gonna go ahead and take casper haltunen i just like the fact that we know he's a top six potential so with the final pick in the first round of the 20 2023 NHL draft the Houston Comets are selecting Casper Haltunen and it was a fantastic pick guys he's a 69 overall nice he is that medium top six potential thank god so I think that was a really good pick here to finish the first round we are off to a fantastic start with taking Haltunen here to end the first round as well as Connor Bedard to start it okay so this is our first out of three second rounders that we have here in the second round of this draft and with our first second rounder I'm gonna go ahead and take the left winger here out of Sweden Joel Svensson. So he's a 65 overall with top six medium potential and he has the superstar abilities elite edges and third eye. With our next second round pick I'm going to take the left defenseman out of Finland R2 Karki and we hit once again he's 65 overall with top 4D potential. So another really solid pick here in the second round for Houston and of course we've got one last second rounder here our third and final second round pick and this is going to be an absolute steal of a pick ladies and gentlemen we've got David Reinbacher here available to us in the second round in real life he is a potential top 10 prospect in this year's draft he's got that top 4d potential he's 62 overall so just another great pick here this draft couldn't be going any better right now with our third round draft pick i'm going to take the right winger cam squires 60 overall top six potential so another really good winger into the system for us and with our fourth round draft pick i'm going to take a bit of a shot here on the goalie prospect noah volley and i'm taking this shot on him because our scouts have him listed as a potential potential gem in this draft class it's worked out for us pretty well so far when I take a player who has the gem rating beside his name so with our fourth round draft pick we take the goalie Noah Volley and let's go he does have that medium starter potential so this was another really good pick he's already a 61 overall so I really like that so he could definitely be a potential starter for our team down the road so here we are now in the sixth round and I'm gonna take this defensive prospect here Elmeri Laxo out of Finland so he's a 60 overall he does have top six potential it is low but that's all right this is a sixth rounder we're talking about so that is our entire draft class now we got Connor Bedard at number one Haltunen at number 33 Svensson at number 42 Karki at 46 Reinbacher which is potentially the steal of the draft at number 61 Cam Squires we took at number 75 we took a solid goalie prospect in Noah Valley at 108 and we rounded out our draft with Laxo at number 174 okay so here we are now in our contracts we are of course going to get Connor Bedard signed to his entry-level contract 
contract. So let's go ahead and do that. So he'll go back to us tonight. And honestly, I'm probably going to sign a good majority of these guys. Uh, Kometov, Omar, and Rivera, I probably won't sign. But literally every single one of our picks from this draft class, I am going to get them signed to their ELCs. All right. So as you guys can see, I've offered a contract to every single one of our draft picks. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our UFAs and RFAs. So Alex Kerfoot is our only pending UFA. He doesn't want to sign an extension. And that is okay with me because this guy freaking wants six years at 5.6 a season. So that's just ridiculous. So we're just going to let Alex Kerfoot walk. See ya. We have a ton of RFAs here that we got to get re-signed. I think I'm going to just go ahead. I'm going to offer a contract to every single one of these guys. I'm just going to quickly show you guys this Jesse Pugliarvi contract offer just because it's a bit of a significant contract. So we're going to give him three years at 4.3. His asking price was 4.424. I'm actually going to put that down to 4 mil. Let's see if we can get him to sign for 4 mil on the dot. And another pretty significant offer that I'm going to show you guys. We are going to sign Philip Heedle to a two-year deal worth $5 million per season. So Jesse Pugliarvi has actually rejected his contract. I tried shaving a couple hundred thousand dollars off of his asking price. So I'll just go ahead and I'll offer him what he wants. Philip Heedle has signed the contract offer that we sent him. So that's great. We've got a great young center locked up now. Connor Bedard has accepted his entry-level contract. So Connor Bedard is now officially a member of the Houston Comets. Let's fucking go. All right, so Jesse Pugliarvi, we're going to give him a two year contract at 4.4 million dollars a season as you can see that is his asking price so he should sign this contract so let's go ahead and offer him that and boom perfect jesse pulyarvi is signed okay so we've got our contracts figured out we've got everybody signed to their contracts except for these four players brian murray kamatov omar and rivera but i did give brian murray a qualifying offer so he should eventually sign back with us all right so here we are at the start of free agency now so let's go ahead and take a look at the free agents available so a bunch of veteran players you got Patty Kane there at 91 overall. Patrice Bergeron is UFA. Tyler Bertuzzi, who we of course moved at the trade deadline here, is a free agent as well. And you've got some good guys here in Pavelski, Tarasenko, Klingberg, Pacioretty, guys like that. Part of me does want to offer a contract to Patrick Kane, just because I think Connor Bedard and Patrick Kane would be a sick combo. With Connor Bedard coming in, you know, things could change. We could be competitive. Maybe we could fight for a playoff spot. Adding a guy like Patrick Kane would be pretty awesome. We've only got 47 out of 50 contracts, so we've got some room to sign some guys, and we've got $26 million in cap space and Patrick Kane only wants one year I'm kind of talking myself into offering a contract here for Patrick Kane do it it would just be really nice to have a 91 overall winger like Patrick Kane playing alongside Connor Bedard. He would put up a lot more points that way. And who knows, maybe we surprise some people. So you know what? Screw it. I am going to go ahead and offer a contract to Patrick Kane. One year, I'm going to offer him $9 million on the dot. This would be a pretty exciting signing here. We'd have Connor Bedard and Patrick Kane as our dynamic duo. Let's go ahead and offer this contract to Patrick Kane and let's hope he signs it. And let's go. Patrick Kane has accepted his contract here to the Houston Comets. So we now have two absolute superstar players on our team and Patrick Kane and Connor Bedard. The Houston Comets are now going to be must watch TV. All right, guys, that is where I'm going to end today's episode. We got through our very first season ever. We got blessed by the draft lottery gods as we jumped all the way from the ninth pick to the first overall pick where we were able to take Connor Bedard. And then we ended things off with a bang by signing the top free agent available in Patrick Kane. So our next episode should be really hype, guys as we get into year two of our expansion franchise and begin the Connor Bedard era here in Houston. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, until next time, moose out.